This is a reply to the ra to Rational Roundtable. Now, he made a video to Thunderfoot a while ago. I'll, I'll get around to making sure I link to it. And, uh, you know, I'm wondering what, what was Thunderfoot up to this time. You know, I've been critical of Thunderfoot. Um, and I haven't really been that interested in his channel, so, you know, I haven't had a lot of chances uh, to praise him. There is stuff to praise. I think he's a good video editor for this type of videos he makes, for example. That's a good skill. But, um, but I've been critical in the D land and coal debate and, and some various other times. And in general, I don't have a very great uh, respect for his, you know, his thinking on, on the issues uh, that he talks about with atheism and religion and cultural things. And Rational Roundtable has criticized a, a, a recent video of, of Thunderfoot's, which I did then watch, where Thunderfoot criticizes Psalm, I think it is Psalm 23, you know, the Lord is our shepherd. And Rational Roundtable is criticizing this, and i got to say, no, I, I'm on the Thunderfoot side of this one. Also, we had some links um, to Happy Cabby, who wrote a blog on this, and the, the defense, uh, or the apologia, against criticizing this particular religious metaphor is just uh, entirely wrong, in my view. I mean, one, uh, th there's an attempt made that... that uh, you know, uh, by Happy Cavi, um, to say that, you know, the, the word shepherd meant something different. It meant something different. The Lord is my shepherd, and I love a good faggot. You know, no, you know, faggot meant bundle wood, now it means something totally different. It's not like that. Shepherd's always been the same. The sheep are always destined for some sort of harvest, and the only... Uh, you know, the only fallback position is that harvest, in the case of sheep, could be of their wool. And what in this metaphor is your will? What are you giving up for this protection of your good shepherd? Your will? Your individuality? Your personality? Bah! I mean, it's, it's not a good metaphor. Um, and the worst part of it is actually this Lord part. See, it's, it's like this. Imagine you're, you're a slave for a few thousand years. You start to get somewhat accustomed to it, even though, thanks to the miracle of uh, bioevolution, you still end up having this yearning to be free. And as a slave then, acculturated a bit at least to slavery, uh, that you start to fall into a couple categories about how you're going to get your freedom while you're sitting around on the slave plantation wondering about it. You know, and one set is like, well, let's run for it, or alternately, let's kill them, all the uh, uh, foremen and then run for it. On the other hand, you have a group of people that's like, well, that's chaos, and they don't really necessarily want to do that. And their idea is just to get a good master. And that's what this part of Christianity is just laden with. And really, for those that look at history as a, a story about the, the, the problem of slavery, it becomes very, very uh, grating and annoying, this language, uh, about the Lord, about the good master. And how, how Christians are, in, to a certain degree, uh, a certain part of Christianity emphasizes, I should say, of being a good slave. And the only reason it's not called that, and the only reason that might sound insulting, is because this is a slave to the perfect master. And see, to me, that's just like, no, I want to get rid of the slave system. I don't want to invent the good master. Because to do that, you have to end up being sheep. You know, the best you could get out of the good master is that you're a bunch of sheep. And that's not good enough. I don't want to live for that. This is a terrible metaphor. And this idea that, that uh, also that Happy Cabby presents that but that's not how Christians are thinking about it. when they say shepherd. They're talking about how good, you know, and back then the animals were treated well. And it's like, no, the sheep are destined for slaughter. When the, when the shepherd protects the sheep from the wolf, it's because he's being robbed. Personally, he's being robbed. He's protecting himself. Right. And uh, the fact is that we have some knowledge about, you know, cognitive science and how thinking works. And when you adopt a metaphor like the shepherd, uh, but no, it's not like the shepherd. It's, it's this other great thing. No, you bring in uh, the framing of shepherding, the framing of mindless sheep, the framing of the good slave, because the Lord, your shepherd, is the good master as well as the good shepherd. And, 
you know, it's right on target. This is a really fundamental, powerful problem and symptom and location of this religious neurosis that we're dealing with. And I don't really see why people would go around uh, defending that metaphor. It's, uh, it's ridiculous. It's repugnant. It's, uh, it, it, in, it, in and of itself, it is a reason not to be Christian, in my opinion.